What's good, good people? It's your boy Cal Griffin here, man. Back with another, another edition of Legends Talk, man. Legends Talk. This week been a doozy. Um, tonight we got none other than your boy and mine, Adrian, A Butter, Walton, street ball legend. You know what I'm saying? Undeniable street ball legend. Um, you know what I'm saying? We gonna get into a lot of stuff today. You know what I'm saying? We gonna get into a lot of stuff, man. We gonna we gonna um, talk EBC. We gonna talk, you know, high school days, graphic arts. Um, we gonna talk prep school. We gonna talk uh, junior college, Cali. We gonna we gonna get into a little bit of everything, man. But um, today we got the Rucker Park legend himself, man. Butter, butter, a butter, Hollywood, whatever you wanna call him. He's here tonight, and he's going. He, he's going to tell a little bit about his story. So let's um, you know, we're going to wait on. We're going to wait on a butter real quick. See what's going on with him. And um, yeah, we here. Thank you for everybody on on the check in. Everybody who's consistently, you know, following up with me and um, just just on uh, making, you know, encouraging me, um, liking pictures. You know, comments and, you know, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Um, without you, um, you know, I wouldn't be able to do this. So, um, you guys, you, d you guys definitely, you guys definitely help me keep going. So, salute to everybody that's out there that, uh, you know, that's on the check-in, that, that knows me. Even if you don't know me, man, um, you know, much appreciated. I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Ryan. Word up, man. You, that's my guy right there, man. Wavy Walker. 33. Yeah, we just trying, man. We just trying to give the people the best product possible, man. The best product possible. Soul Pack Mike, what's up, baby? What's going on? Everybody on the check-in, everybody go check out Soul Pack, man. They got some fire over there. Don't wait till they blow up, man. Don't wait till they in the, you know, they they already in the, they already in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? So, okay, okay. Okay, guess who's here? Guess who's here? Who? Your boy and mine. Yeah, yes, sir. Respectfully. 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 Hey, I'm in the building for Harlem. Respectfully. <laughs> Respectfully. Yo. Shout out to my guy, Sugar J, you dig? Respect yo, 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 hey, man, I got to say this before we get started, right? I'm from Harlem, too, right? I, and, and I always I, I always, bang, I always bang with you, right? Not even for your basketball, you know, I said you was nice and all that, but just for the simple fact that you always, you always rep Harlem. You know what I'm saying? Now, you have to. Harlem. Hey, yo, let me tell you something. And if you think about the people, you know, Dipset for life, you heard? Yeah, yeah. Who am I to fuck tradition up? <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I'm from Harlem. You get what yeah. I'm saying? At the end of the day, my whole objective is to make sure that, you know, that I try to make sure that I keep, like, tradition up and I, I, I try to carry myself and move a certain way where, you know, that I watch for, you know, 39 years. You get what I'm saying? At the end of the day, I don't take that for granted. It's a lot, right. I, you know, coming from the 80s, you know what I'm saying? Being one of the, I don't know how they call it, but I ain't a millennial. I'm the one after that. Like, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the era that I grew up in, like, seeing Michael Jordan and all of the, all I'm saying, the era that I grew up in, like, the people, I, I saw the iPhone being created. I saw the computer right. being created. All I'm saying is, I grew up in a different era, so... We move different. You get it. Like, yeah, yeah. you, yeah, you yeah. saw what 8th Avenue was. You you understand yeah, yeah. how the oh, cars yeah. lined up. So, yeah, them, them you lines cannot crazy. be forgetting a nickname named Hollywood. I come from, I didn't know that Mace and Big L and Cam and Dave East and all of these, Tiana Taylor, all of these people was going to be Jim Jones. I ain't know all these people was going to become who they are. I, I grew up with these people straight up. Right, 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 right. You know, you know Jim is actually my, my man. Jim, Jim from my project, so you know what I'm saying. Now we, I always seen um, Kingdom Foster. Yeah, yeah. I, well, I'm from Taps. Jim you from, from Taps. Taps? So I'm, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't let hey, Jim yo, yo, yo. Don't, don't, 
tell you from Foster. Don't let Jim tell you from Foster, man. He from Taz, man. Nah, no, 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 no. Jim don't say he from Foster. He always hung over there on Foster, 15 yeah, 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 yeah. minutes. But Facts. he always Facts. worked Taz. You feel me? Of course, of course. But, yo, uh, hey, before we get into it, man, I, I want to shout out my sponsor for this platform, Soul Pack. Soul Pack got some fire back um, backpacks, book the bags. The book bags is fire. Yeah, I see them. Yeah. Oh, I saw Word. them. I... Word. Everybody, everybody on the check-in, um, go check out Soul Pack. Um, they got some heat, man. They got some heat for you, and um, tell them, tell them all things who sent you, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Don't don't wait. Don't wait until they blow up. Don't wait until they get on a yeah. whole different level. I know they already moving. I'm just saying, don't right. wait until they get on a different level, and all of a sudden you catching the wave. You're right. doing it right now on the come up. Right. Right. Exactly. Exactly. But yeah, man. Yo, hey, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for. You know, what I'm saying you. I, I know you usually. Asking the questions and all that, you know what I'm saying? Oh, like, it's whatever. I'm, 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 a, I'm a student of the game, just like you, man. So, you know what that. I'm saying? Ro roles are reversed now. I'm, I'm, a, I'm asking the questions. And, and I you, appreciate that. And I like what you're saying? doing, too. Before you even get into what you're doing, I appreciate what you're doing. Why? Because at the end of the day, you're making sure that people not forgot. Period. Right. Right. And at the end of the day, when you look at just like, put like people just throw an example out there like master rob you feel what i'm saying it's mm -hmm. like you can't google and see footage really like that of master rob right so all i'm saying is the history that you making sure that you you you, you bring it right now to your platform all i'm saying is salute to you because you don't really realize i don't know maybe you do that's why you're doing it but you don't really realize how you're making sure that people are never forgotten Salute to that. Yo, yo, hey man, you know, again, I'm, I'm a, I'm a student, I'm a student of this game. So, you know that, and that goes from, you know, what I'm saying, I, my, actually, my, one of my first articles was on Speak First podcast when, when, um, when B was on there, when B Bone was on there. I appreciate that. One of my first. Shout out to my first, right, that's Bone. That's my guy. That's the first that's person right, I called my, that's my brother. when I wanted to do this. You know what I'm saying? If there's anything that I make sure that I always say. That was the first person that I thought of when I wanted to do a podcast. Right, I thought right. of Bernard Bowen, and I said, yo, let me holler at him and try to figure it out. He connected me with Andrew Martinez, and it just went from there. So shout out to hey. Bernard Bowen. You know what I'm saying? Hey, we're going we to get into a, a, a lot of stuff, man. Without, you know me. I told you. I'm ready to talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, yo, they, when the Henny and the sister, yeah. I'm ready to talk spice. Yeah. I'm ready to talk, man. Like I know, I know. Let's let's get in, let's get into it, man. But I, 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 you know, first off, man, I wanna I wanna ask you, man. Um, in terms of this game, you know what I'm saying? And this game of basketball, man, that we all love. When did when did you start playing ball? And when did that love turn into something more, you know, more serious for you? Uh, I started playing basketball when I was like 12, 13, 14. I'm the latest, if I'm not mistaken. I say about 12 or 13. I was in the seventh, for seventh, getting ready to go into the eighth grade. I was at IS 275. And like I said, at the time, I always say this, that I didn't realize that Nate Tiny Archibald was the gym coach at the school. So, you know, him and a guy by the name of Donald Bird, they always kept trying to get me to come in the gym. And I guess because they always see me at lunchtime, doing a lot in the yard, you know what I'm right, saying? Right. So me going to that school and them trying to get me in the gym, I got a love and a feel for the game. I grew, I grew up in Harlem, you know, Abyssinia, they always had like flag football and baseball and different activities yeah, yeah. like that. Basketball at that time wasn't really something that was popular in the neighborhood at the time that I grew up in. So it was like, I grasped on to the, the community things that, you know what I'm saying? But in school, it was it was that moment that I could say that they kind of, like, motivated me now that I'm a little older and I look back. Right. It's like, why was this man always trying to tell me to come to the gym? Why was he always in there saying, hey, you're supposed to spin the ball. Like, you could do that. If you're always trying it, try it. Like, and, you know, as you get older and you kind of, like, that's why I always put the hashtag, but it never forgets. When I remember this stuff, it's like, Wow, he really was telling me that. You get what I'm saying? So it's like right. when I do my interviews, that's why I kind of like always try to ask people stuff from history because it's like the stories that I have with people is like a lot of people put me on to things and I just be like to make sure that they verify, 
you get right. what I'm saying, that these things happen, and it always makes the story even better. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to Nate Tiny Archibald. Shout out to um, Donald That's Brooks. Fire. You know, That's those fire. two people in IS 275, they really helped me feel like basketball was a way to, 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 to try and see what it could do for me. Right, right. So, so I mean, it, it kind of, I guess you kind of took off real fast, you know what I'm saying? And, um, Not really, because I – from from playing in junior high school, I started with the you know in in junior in junior high school you really not you really don't know if you real for basketball so I kind of like went and played for like the neighborhoods uh -huh. AAU team which was St. Mark's uh -huh. and there was a guy by the name of Rest in Peace Eliminate Lex Lex Alexis Smith he was the guy where he was the coach at St. Mark's him Coach Wee uh, yeah yeah. Uh, Big Rick, you know what I'm saying? Coach Kev, these guys was at St. Mark's between, on 138th between, in the church, between Lennox and 5th Avenue. And Lex used to work on 125th in the wig store close to Lennox Avenue. So it was like, this guy at that time was saying, come to the gym. You know, you live on 7th Avenue. Come to the gym. Like, you know, so I started coming to the gym and you know, just playing from midgets and then juniors right, and right, watching, right. you know, I I must I know y'all hear this a lot when it comes to basketball players, but if you're if you really played the game and you was good at you was a student in the game. So now that I look back, I was a young kid playing midgets and I was staying to watch seniors and unlimited play in practice. Right. So it's like rest in peace. I saw Huddy Six. I saw uh uh my man Chili, I saw Mike Bruno. Like these were guys in my neighborhood that was, that was block, older block, than right? me. You you get what I'm saying? That was playing for this team. So right. you know, in my neighborhood, HUD Six was nice. Rest in peace. Right. You, you get what I'm trying to say? So Marcus Hatton on the check in. What's up, Mark? I, me, you know, just being from Harlem and looking at these guys, and this is the neighborhood. I got an opportunity to get tough just being at St. Mark's. It was like, when by the time I got the juniors, you know, I'm about 15, about 16. I stayed. My father used to put me on punishment and be mad at me because I would stay to play with the unlimited. And I don't know if y'all guys ever Googled or seen, you know, NFL on uh -huh. YouTube, but it's like I grew up nice. with Big L, his brother, rest in peace, Big Lee, Big Lee Herb right. McGruff. I grew up with all of these guys in this Danger neighborhood. Zone. Like, they right there. You get what I'm saying? But they used to use St. Mark's for their gym when they came and played at night. Uh -huh. So it was certain grown men at a young age that I used to play against that I always make sure that I credit because – I know we don't see it enough today where we always see an uh, age bracket playing against this age bracket. But back in the day, if you was younger, what helped you get better and helped you get nicer is you playing against people that was older than you. So right. it's like if a guy like from I'm 40, I don't know if y'all ever heard of something called 40 Wolves, but that was a mm. that was a crew, a crew in a group from I'm 40. And it's like, you know, if you if you from Harlem back in the days, you wouldn't really walk up a hundred forty because they was on a different type of town back in the day. <laughs> Word up. You get what I'm saying? And Word. it's a post office over there. That's why I'm able to say this to you. You know, if you're from Harlem, you know, you know you gotta go to the post office, but you was kind of nervous to go down that block. It's a lot of they didn't play a, they played a different way on a hundred forty period. You get yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, from yeah, eight, you could, yeah, you couldn't walk down to Lennox Avenue, a home 40 have played a different type of game, period. So all I'm saying to you is playing against those type of people growing up, Rick Roos was a guy that was from over there, and it was like he was like an enforcer, but on basketball court, he had that same type of aggression. So it's like, right. you know, imagine you going for a layup and, and a guy that got muscles, he knock you into the stage after you try to go to the basket. All I'm saying is if you're from the neighborhood, what you gonna do? You gonna you're younger than him. What you gonna you ain't gonna turn around and want to fight him because you already know what's up. If right, you grew up that. in poverty and the hood, you know what's up. Right. So, I always try to make sure that I throw those names out there, bro, because 
those guys, now that I look back, they gave me a certain type of toughness to build off of. You know what I'm saying? And I know that that's why Harlem always showed me love because it's like, I don't really go to like, this person put me on to that. Nah, the hood. That's yeah. what my, my podcast is called Streets First. I learned a lot from the streets. The streets taught me a lot. You know what I'm saying? Of and course. I always make sure that I show love to the streets. No, of course, man. That, that's the actually, that's actually the best teacher. You know what I'm saying? Experience, the streets, you know what I'm saying? And, and you really find out what not to do. You know what I'm saying? By them streets. But um, not to cut you off, know, but if you think about it, if a if a parent, you know, a lot of parents they 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 protect their kids. But right. if you think about what I'm saying to you, and you know, you, if you grew up in Harlem, if a parent take a child to the playground and allow a child to be a child, it's a lot that that child will learn in the playground. Mm -hmm. I know that we protect our kids, but take your child to a playground and allow your child to be around other children. It's a lot that your kid will learn in the playground. Right. You you get what I'm saying? But they, you got a lot of parents that protect all that. They ain't, You get what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. you know what I'm talking about because we grew up in that. And that's right. what I'm trying to say. Like, people look at us like sometimes why are we so tough or why do we respond like that? You don't understand sometimes the environment that we grew up in that we had to have a hard skin in order to be able to keep going. But, right. you know. It's showtime, baby. Keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, nah. We lit, man. We lit, man. I, I appreciate that. That's that's a genuine answer, actually, man. But um, in terms of you know, you elevated yourself into into legendary status, right? At a at a young age, um, mm. you went to well, you went to graphic arts. You went to graphic arts at first, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We we do our homework. Me and Sugar J. That's why I support Sugar J. Me and Sugar J. Cardan, you know, shout out to Cardan. Yeah, yeah. We all, me and Cardan was in 275, so it's like, I, I kind of like introduced Cardan to me. So when you saw the whole all out, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, it's funny me, how me things, know when all of them. it's funny how things work out. You get what I'm saying? But me and him went to junior high school together. We was in 275 together. I took him one time with me to hunt 40th and we hung out with Mace and him and Mace got along so well that Cardi ain't never leave around from around me. You right, get what right. I'm saying? So it's just so funny how things work out. But then, like I said, I went to high school. Me and Sugar J went to graphic arts together. Right, right. So it's like, you know, I, I've known Sugar J for that long to where it's like, you know, Sugar J even was implemented one time with a deal to make sure that I got paid in Rucker Park. He brought mm. me the envelope. You get what I'm saying? So it's like, I always make sure that I try to show love and throw those yeah. things out because I knew in my upbringing, those guys saw a significant change for me to where they supported me. So I'm going to always make sure that I show love and support them. You know what I mean? It was like right. graphic arts. He seen me have my first dunk. Did you like, play with them That was the first time that I ever dunked in my life. It was at graphic arts. Did you? Did they? They had a. I mean, they had a team. I, I really don't remember them having really like a like a basketball team and all that. They had a. They had a squad and all that. I mean, there was my man. Like these are guys that I'm still cool with. You know what I'm saying through Facebook. But it's like you know, they had a guy. My man, um, John Artist. They had my man, uh, Shaq. You know what I'm saying? They had my, they had another guy by the name of um, his name was Sickle, but he wasn't the Sickle that we know. Right, but right. the point I'm trying to make is they had some Brooklyn guys that and Queens guys that was really type tough. That was what graphic arts was kind of like. They had a lot of Brooklyn and Queens people. Park West was down the street, so they had a lot of Brooklyn and you get what I'm trying to say. So right, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was a mix. They, we had a team, like, we beat, like, A. Philip Randolph and Manhattan Center. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was in that division, but Good we price. probably lose, you know, to, like, uh, King or – you get what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, of course. We, we, we played against these schools. We had an I team, but I wasn't really ready for basketball at that time. Like, I was nice, but then again, I wasn't nice, nice, because it you was like – You wasn't A. Butter yet. At, everything changed when I went to AAU and played for Gauchos in Riverside. Like, Gauchos, after leaving from St. Mark's and playing in high school and going to Gauchos, Gauchos allowed me to still be the open court player that I am, but I had coaches that taught me things and pushed me. Dave mm -hmm. McCollin, people are that, the Twins, 
people of that nature, like, they pushed me and taught me things that I was able to add to my game. So it was like, I traveled, Paul Brown, you know, shout out to Paul Brown. They, I traveled, they did things for me, they took care of me. But it was still something that I felt like I was missing because I knew that even though I was playing at that age and I was learning the game and I was traveling, if I was to go to the next level, I ain't really just being an open court player. Sometimes you don't really understand plays, bro. Right. And right. I got to always shout out the Riverside Church. You know, my cousin Ernest, he was playing with Riverside at that time and told me, like, yo, you know, you need to come to Riverside. I know you're over there at Gauchos, but Riverside, like, they're going to teach you, eh? And they're going to make sure you're good. And Mr. Lloyd's going to help you when he see your talent. I went over to Riverside. I tried out. I made the team. But that's how real Riverside was. They had an A team, and I had to play on the B team. And it right, was like, right, right. shout out to Ray for Austin. Salute. Like, yes, good. What up, before good. I keep my story going, I always want to make sure that I throw this out there. Like, Rafe was a goat to me, bro. Like, for everything that I've done in my life, I've always looked at and had him as the model for what I was trying to do in my life. You, you mm. get what I'm saying? It's like, I appreciate people like him, even getting a chance to play with people like him, because it's like, now, when you look back, it's like, that guy was, like, special with what he did and it was just straight off of talent. And I know that just being around him and making sure that he saw, like, the the, the, the the energy that I had, it was like, whether I did the right things or not, I know that that's something that he'll always respect because it was like the dog that I saw in him. It's the dog that I saw in Jamal Tinsley. It was the dog that I saw in Kareem Reed. It was right. the dog that I saw in Steph Marbury. I ain't have no other choice but to go the way that I went. I yep. saw these guys before me, bro. You get yeah, what I'm know. saying? Sham guys, like I saw all of them before me. Reggie Freeman, like I couldn't. You you can't play when you see with the ones before you done. You get what I'm saying? So right. I just wanted to throw that out there. Like shout out to Skip, man. You're a nah, nah, you're definitely. Good from New York, man. Salute to you, bro. Nah, definitely, definitely is a goat, man. You know what I'm saying? I had the opportunity and the pleasure to to um chop it up with him. Nice. Right. I told him that. And, and that was fire, man. That was fire for me. You know what I'm saying? Just, just the same thing that you said, man. Just kind of being, just looking up, looking up the cats, and um, and now you, you know what I'm saying? You're talking to them, or you, you're, you're side by side with them now. You know what I'm saying? So it's a different level of respect. You know what I'm saying? But, um, like, like it's no secret that you you put in a lot of pain, you know what I'm saying, specifically at, at EBC. You know what I'm saying? EBC um, played, played well, primarily. I saluted him, with, um, but I gave him that work. Don't don't Wait. get it twisted. Before he got on Fat Joe, yo, I told you I'm talking spicy. Because oh, these yeah. facts, talk I got your, the footage. These facts. Talk your shit, eh? I'm 17, bro. These guys is about two, three years, four years, the le more at least older than me. Right. I gave them all the business. And you got to understand that I'm able to talk like this because I played for Tony Rosa before I played for Fat Joe. So at the end of the day, I played for a coach that, you know, shout out to the Mustangs from Harlem. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Tony Rosa. Shout out to Rock Rosa. But what I'm saying right. is this, they didn't really have the superstars. I played with Africa. I played with Danny Artest. I played with... Moses. I play with players like that that had names like that that people don't really know like that. But at the end of the day, they knew the Charles Jones. They knew the Lamont Jones. They knew the Lenny Cook. But they ain't know the Adrian Walton. They, they, you they I, after, after you was finished, they knew who Adrian Walton was. So my whole objective was, you know, like I said, shout out to Skip. Shout out to them people because they was playing in the Rucker before I came in. When I was 16, turning 17, when I saw those people on the gate and all that, when I went up there to that park, I ain't played. I wouldn't try out for a team. I wouldn't go try to make a team. I right. knew that. I'm being honest with you, bro. That shit was different. Yo, hey, you how was what I'm trying to say? Like, what I saw going up there, being from Harlem, it was right. like, I'm not going to lie to you. I was a little intimidated because... That's what I wanted to ask you. The like, basketball that I'm playing, like... 
you don't see like this type of attention watching. So if I came from Harlem and I'm playing like say something like Black Top, Positive Sup, Bird Classics, uh, let's go downtown to a uh, GOAT tournament. Hey yo, bro, they got a crowd, but they ain't got what Rucker got, bro. Right. So yo, hey, I'm how, growing what up was your emotions home. like though? What was your emotions like when 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 you're faced up against a, a Steve Francis, a, a Vince Carter, Seth yeah. Marbury, T Skip? You know what I'm saying? Baron Davis, BD. What kind of yo, emotions are going through your head when, yo, when they lined up next to you? Like, I ain't going to lie to you. By that time, I, I had, when I left Milford Academy, shout out to Mr. Lois, rest in peace. Milford, Mr. Lois got paid for me to go to Milford Academy, which is a prep school. I got an opportunity in my life to work on my game. Mm. When I worked on my game and I came back to New York City, like I said, I always try to tell people, if you're from Harlem and you follow my story, you know, they used to call me the sellout. There was a tournament in my neighborhood. I played for Mace. I played for the, the, the Black Top the, the, thing, right? Black Top Classic. So it was like, you know, there was a kid from from from, from a hunt, uptown, 151st, 152nd, 8th Avenue named Darius. They called him Ice Cream. You know, he he was nice. I ain't gonna lie. There was a lot of guys that came, Mike, Mike McLeod. From downtown, it was a lot of guys that came and played in this tournament at that time, bro. I'm just keeping it 100. Guys was nice. Mike, yo, Mike gave me the rundown on on the uh, on, on your one on one matchup too. Mike gave and, me a and, little. And, and that's what I'm start. saying to you. When I when I came back from Milford Academy, it was like Rashad, was Mc, <laughs> Rashad McNair. Before I go to Rucker, Rashad McNair, he was playing a a a a a a, a, a era ahead of me. So if I was juniors, he was on seniors or unlimited. Right. With St. Mark's. It was like it was people Sham God was on the cover of the Sports Illustrated. Mike McLeod was like the, the, the guy talked about in Harlem from downtown. You know, right. Kendall World Premier was like the guy from Kingdom that was nice. All I'm saying, if I'm keeping it a hundred, these were all the names that I heard in New York, in Harlem, that was rocking. Right. So when I say to you, when I came back from Milford, it was on some... I remember in that tournament, they called me the sellout, bro. But well, what was that about, sellout. When I go make a layup, the guy that's on the mic, he was screaming, the sellout. See, a lot of people don't really know my story to understand why I talk trash, because it's like, I remember the guy when I was younger, calling me to sell out in the 139th Street Park in that tournament. So it's like, I'm from this hood, and he's calling me that. I right. went away to school. I took the key, nigga. The, the coach gave me the key. You know, shout out to Mark McCarroll to hang with 50 Cent. Shout out to my man, Big Frank, that's the security for, you know, French Montana. You got to understand, these guys were on my team. Right. They were my centers. They saw me 2, 3 in the morning going to the gym. Yo, hey, what are you doing? We're in a Don't small worry. town in Milford, Connecticut. What are you doing? Why are you going to the gym? Yo, bro, I was getting so nice because, like, they ain't understand what I had in my heart that my, my, my community was saying about me. Right. So when I came back, all I'm saying to you is I went from the sellout to the best seller. <laughs> Yo, look. There was a guy in my neighborhood that nobody would make sure that they were bet against. I will, I'll never get to tell his story, but I got to say it. His name was Rashad McNair. He's from 142nd. They called him the shooter. Ra was real nice. Mm. <laughs> All I know is no one would bet for Adrian. I'm 16, 17. I'm 17 years old. I just turned 17 years old now. This is my turn to show my neighborhood I'm real. Mm. Game is 40. He makes the first basket. Herb McGruff, Cameron, the whole hood. Mace, everybody, they in the park. Everybody going crazy. The whole he danger the second zone. basket. <laughs> Score four zip. They know he about two, three years older than me. So they feel like with the first two jump shots, he done killed. Like, like, yeah, yo, hey, I don't think you know what you got yourself into. Like, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we yeah, from yeah. Harlem. We see him play. We hear about him. He missed the third shot. He yes, never sir. touched the ball again, and the game was 32-4. <laughs> he quit. Mm. I'm just trying to tell you how real I got in, in Milford.
it was on some when I started playing people in my neighborhood, that's why I know Mike McLeod told you that. They're, everybody, after they finish, Kendall Hall, I didn't know he was that strong. Why? Because mm -hmm. there were certain things that I was working on in Milford to when I came back to New York. Because of what those older guys was doing to me, it wasn't about the guys that was my age. I wanted to be prepared for them older niggas that was doing what they was doing to me to show them that at the end of the day, I ain't got to fight you. I figured out how to adjust to that. And guess what? It ain't nothing you could do now. And right. you know what? Till this day, those older niggas show me where I love and respect. Why? Because I ain't coming back. I ain't come back at them with aggression. I figured out how to utilize that to become a legendary player. So when you talk about now going into Rucker, it was like, I'm ready now. I'm ready. You get what I'm saying? Because... This videotape, bro, I'm losing. And you got all of them, man. You got all Yo, bro, of them. Yo, bro, I'm losing to Shamgar. He's on the cover of Sports Illustrated in my neighborhood at this time. Home 44th Street and Lennox Gym, Abyssinia. I play Shamgar one-on-one. -on -one. I'm losing to Shamgar at this time, one-on-one, -on -one, 24 to 12. Hear me out, 24 to 12. Game is 40. This is what we do in Harlem. Game straight 40. Right, right, two. Right. I'm losing 24 to 12. I hit him with a move and I shake him, but I cross over. He, he touched the floor, almost fell. But when I go for the layup, he almost closed on me. We getting ready to fight. Hold on, man. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get Shan. Let me, let, me, let me send this to Shan real quick. This oh. real talk. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you something. I told you I'm talking spicy. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nigga that keep it 100, bro. I don't mess Got you. stuff up. It's on footage. They can't deny this stuff. Nah, he nah, I'm fucking with you. But when I hit him with this move and he touched the floor, it's on my page. I show he touched the floor, he hits me foul. Hard. He fouls me. They don't, we don't show the full tape, but we get in each other's face and it's like, you know, we both from Harlem. Yeah. My thing was, yo, bro, you're a little older than me. Just because I hit you with a move, you're not going to start doing this. Yeah, you ain't back down, pretty much. From that point on, I had a different type of angle. Wherever you check the ball up at, I'm shooting from. I'm going to show you you can't fuck with me. Mm -hmm. Wherever you check the ball up at, I'm going to shoot from. He All started right. throwing the ball damn near to half court. He started throwing the ball every... It's footage of this, bro. So I'm not... like That's why I said I'm talking greasy because I got facts. I don't yeah, let's, let's let's continue the the greasy talk, right? So now, now that you said you mentioned the jump shot from anywhere, anywhere on the court, right? I want to talk about the Vince Carter game. No, you know I'm, I'm gonna jump to that, but I didn't miss nothing. That's what I was. I just wanted yeah, to, let's get to it. let let's, you know this. I don't think you, I I don't think you know this. From wherever he checked the ball up, he was up 24-12. I'm up 28-14, and he started fouling me on jump shots. And we never finished the game. That's all I wanted to tell you. I want to <laughs> let you know that at the end of the day, niggas that I played one on one, uh, it wasn't it wasn't a game before I got the rucker. That's how I knew yeah, I was yeah, ready yeah. for rucker. Let's talk. Nah, nah, fa facts, man. You know what I'm saying? That's, That's all. These is facts. I'm so talking much... spicy. <laughs> spicy. So yeah, so I mean, they they pretty much got you, you know, that that uh, that that year at prep school prepared you for for the for the trenches, right? So so now fast forward, you're doing your thing in, in EBC. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you're, you're, you're the the youngest the youngest dude in charge right now, pretty much. Yeah, you're, you're the you know what I'm saying, 17 year old that's that's straight killing everybody, everything moving. Um, you know what I'm saying? You're playing with Fat Joe. Fat Joe actually seeked you out. Like, he, he seeked you out. This was before Fat Joe. I played no, with no, Tony no, Rose no. when I played against Vince. You play? Oh, you play? Who you played with when, when you were playing? I played I play for Bacon Lot when I played okay. against Vince Carter. He was on Black Hand. Okay. So oh, right, right, right. Before I even went to Vince. You know I what I'm saying? Mean, before I, I went say, to I ain't gonna Fat lie. Joe. Nah, like, that's why I'm trying to tell you, like, I don't mind making sure that we're on the same page because right. why you think I told you I want to talk spicy? It, it was a lot of niggas I killed. I'm glad you start talking about this fucking shit. Yeah, we got a lot of them. That's, part, that's so, a big part of your story. We could go, we could, we could start off with Vince because it was like, he was like 
my first year, and after my first two games, because I started off up there dribbling and trying to get a name and really wasn't trying to win, they called me the young one. But my third game, my number's number three, my third game, I started doing all type of shit. And they named me. I'm listening to Al Cash. Shout out to Al Cash. He's the one who named me a whole lot of game. I started hearing him say, yo, this kid got a whole lot of game. Yo, we need to call him a whole lot of game. Look what he's doing. He ain't just got the handle. He's shooting. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's doing a whole lot. You get what I'm saying? So the whole lot of game came from Al Cash. Now, I go play against Vince. Vince already kind of like got warm because, I mean, warm because he got put on by, shout out to Prime Objective. Him and Prime Objective showed up to the game just a little bit late. They came while the game already started, so we was almost towards the end of the first quarter when Vince Carter checked in the game. Wait, hold on, hey, hold on, hey, real quick. Just to backtrack up just a second, right? Mm -hmm. So so when, when you find, you catch wind that Vince Carter is going to be matching, you matching up against Vince Carter, Yeah, they right? said he was coming. Yeah, so now... Of course, you know what I'm saying? You, you're you not going to show that you, you know what I'm saying, you scared or, you, you know what I'm saying, you even thinking about it. Like, I hung but, on the but what was your true, minutes. What was your true emotion? Like, yo, like, was, was you on some, yo, he can't, he can't, he can't bang with me? No, nah, I hung it? on the 142nd and Linux, and I'm keeping a 100. Shout out to 142nd and Linux. You know, 142nd and Linux always had a lot of people to hang over it. Dame Dash, Biggs, Jay-Z. Just a whole lot, Cam, Mace, like a whole lot of people always loom. A whole lot of the people liquor always hung out on the home 42nd and Linux. All I'm saying All to right. you is, in my mind at that time, it was like, yo, dog, they got a person with a name coming. And because I'm from Harlem, I feel like you don't really get the recognition that you're supposed to get until you show it against somebody that got the same type of name that you know you belong on. So my whole mentality was because of playing against Sham God, because of playing against people one-on-one -on -one that I knew had names in my community before me, just a hundred now that I'm old, I ain't give a fuck about this nigga. It was on time. <laughs> Yo, there no, listen, go. like, he got, and he knew that because when he got in the game, he said to me, like, I asked him, like, yo, dog, Charles Jones, I ain't say Charles Jones and him on the court, but I said these my words. Why you why you guarding me, bro? Right. And he was like, yo, don't worry about that. I'm gonna make you better. So I don't that's why I always say brother never forget because I don't forget nothing. I remember what he said to me. Me being from Harlem and everything that I've been through, you can't tell me you're gonna make me better and I know what type of wars I've been through. I know what type of niggas I played against. Right. So I took that even more personal. So when y'all saw me going at someone and playing like that, I already had something on my shoulder. It was a shrug against him. It was like, he made me feel like, because I watch TV and he's rookie of the year, and I know North Carolina be winning, so I've seen him play. He made me feel like, because he's known, then I'm going to be known. And I ain't going to lie to you, even because the world still remembers that, I feel like I put my part in to make sure you did. It ain't right. based off of because I played a rookie of the year. Niggas remember that I gave that nigga the business. How much you had that game? That, you get what I'm saying? How much you had that game? When I, I watched the tape, when I, I watched the tape, 40. and I, I had, was... when I watched the tape and I add all the points, it was 41. But Vince only got 35 of it. So in reality, I really only gave Vince 35. Because he came at the end of the first quarter. I did score a couple of points before he got in the game. Right. I keep it 100 because I got the tapes. You get what I'm saying? So it's like I know there's something that people talk about. So it's like I got to make sure that I know the numbers. And it's like when you look at the numbers, it's like, yo, dog, you was guarding me. So I won what I call a war, meaning the crowd and people didn't want to see nobody else with the ball. Right. So they started screaming when Annie Freeze or 
Hey, you know like, how I get. You know how I they get. They started like, yo, yo, get a ball back because they saw him score, then they saw me score. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, I scored seven times in a row. He missed the seventh one. But yeah. two, three plays later, he made up for missing the seventh what one. Did, what they did in the alley and he windmill that shit. Yeah. And if I'm keeping it a hundred in that era at that time, it was crazy. I ain't never seen a nigga catch a. Uh, Ali, you I said, yo, bro, I was like, <laughs> I tried to windmill and could windmill and, you know, not as full as he yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, taller. Yeah. This is but what I'm saying is when I saw a nigga catch a, a windmill off an of alley, it was like, I knew that I made that nigga mad at that time because it was like he was on some, like, Yo, game over. Like, right. I know y'all like this nigga, but don't act like y'all ain't never, yeah, 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 don't yeah. act like y'all seen this shit before. Right. So, if I'm keeping it a hundred, it was like, yeah, nobody's bro, seen that shit before. Nobody's seen I that woke alley up, from there before. When I woke up the next day on my father's grave, on my brother's grave, when I woke up the next day, you got to hear me and hear this from my heart. Life was never the same. I, I remember really what my life was like before I played against Vince Carter. And I don't give him all that credit, but it's like, I give myself credit because I know what I stood up to when it came to a battle. You know what was fire though? I recently uh, saw him on Fat Joe's joint on, mm. on his uh, podcast, you know, quote unquote, and he actually gave you all the respect. You know what I'm saying? Twenty what? 30, 30 years later, like nah, that, I, that cap belonged. So that, we're that in twenty 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 one years later. Like for me, I know that a lot of these guys can't say because of the era in the world that we live in, and they can't really talk too highly of themselves about, you know, when they came and played in an early age or an early time of their career in a tournament. You know what I'm saying? At that time was the best tournament in the world because they were ball players and they always kept themselves in a space where they felt like they always needed to play where it was the best at. But, like I said, it was always good to hear regardless of when you hear it. What he always went through in the NBA, he felt like when he played that night against me, I was one of them. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, on a night-to-night -night basis, that's what he plays against. And that had to, yeah, the, that had words, to good, bro. the words and the respect that I heard, it was like, you know, we all got politics in the game, but he knew that if we was just talking about who laced their sneakers up. That's why I was always so highly of myself. It was like, it used to be like, yo, why he move and act? Yo, bro, I laced my sneakers up just like these niggas. So right. even though you give them a certain pedestal because they made it, you know, due to whatever politics, because everybody got politics in their basketball resume and story. We don't really talk about that, but everybody got politics in you, you get right, what I'm right. saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if when you, we lace our really... sneakers up and we play, you, you, you can't deny that, bro. I mean, you was on the same kind of pedestal, you know what I'm saying? But on a on on a different level, you know what I'm saying? In terms of you know the the, the EBC, that was the no. Ass. But they had to, they had to give me that because EBC got just as much as exposure as if you would say college basketball or NBA basketball yeah, yeah. due to all the different magazines, all the different newspapers, all the different, uh, how do you say it, TV entities that yeah, yeah, involve yeah. themselves with Rucker. You've never seen another tournament that had ESPN set up their whole, you know, where Stuart Scott and the other guy is basically doing their, their, their whole in hour interview from Rucker's right, right, You've never right. seen them do that nowhere else from a tournament. I've seen that. I've witnessed that with my own eyes. I've got to meet these people with my own eyes. David so Stern in the crowd. Trying to like... make is at that time, that was what was looked at as the best tournament in the world. So all I'm saying is, I, how you say it, respectfully, I played in an era where, I, like I call it the golden era. Why? Because I played when all the NBA players wanted to play in it. And I played where all the rappers wanted to be a part of it. 
That's and that's you the ex- most world. And, and you you ain't just play, you excel. You know what I'm saying? You no fuck <laughs> but, excel. We talking spicy, nigga. I'm a winner. Rest in peace to Kobe Bryant. I'm a five time winner in a tournament that I'm telling you it was the best in the world. And mm. I won before the nigga that I won with three in a row. I won with Fat Joe. I won with Tony Rosa before I won with Fat Joe. That's the only reason why I play with Fat Joe. Because of what Fat Joe saw me do against him with Tony Rosa, he ain't have no other choice but to pay me. He ain't have no other choice but to bribe me. Fat Joe came to my motherfucking high school graduation. You got to understand, Fat Joe's from the Bronx. So what is it like I'm graduating? I ain't graduate from Gompers or one of them Kennedy or one of them dope high school, Stevenson. And I graduated from an alternative school, right. Bronx Regional on Reverend James A. Polite Avenue, not Prospect, the block down that only goes maybe set six blocks. Right, right, All I'm right. trying to tell you is imagine a nigga that's from Trinity Avenue that's a superstar coming Fucking in there. Yeah, 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 yeah. They didn't even watch the graduation of us walking the stage. Everybody wanted to know why Fat Joe was there. <laughs> Me. Fat yes. Joe did what, what's love with Ashanti and Fordham. I would, yo, yo, Joe, look, you could pay me and I'll play in Rucker for you. But if you don't show me the love, I'm not going to keep playing for you. Now, we know, I'm we know, Harlem. we know the bag was right. We know the bag was right, man. The, the yo, 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 listen, up, none man. of these, yo, and I always, like I said, I'm talking spicy. None of these niggas was getting seven, eight thousand. Niggas, yo, listen, guys was getting paid $400. Tyrone Grant, shout out to them, respect. Charles Jones, respect. Fat Joe brought those guys from other teams and was giving guys four to six to eight hundred dollars a game. And guess what? They took four to six to eight hundred dollars a game without even playing. Respectful. Even sitting on the bench. Reggie Freeman, sometimes, even sitting on the bench the whole game. Why? Because they wasn't getting that money when they was playing for them other teams. Fat Joe was making yo. I remember one year Fat Joe paid all the good players from other teams to play on his team, even if he sat them. Butter wasn't on that. I got footage, nigga. Hey yo, look, you can but, have Butter was getting yo, ten G's a game, man. Hey yo, bro, he had <laughs> yo, he had Kareem Reed, and Kareem Reed had to start because Mousy was the coach. Kareem Reed is Mousy's man. Right. Fat Joe has Steph Marbury. Steph is Fat Joe's man. So it's nothing you could do about them two. That's why I shout out and show love to Skip. He was the Skip third with guard. Our, Skip played with Fat Joe too for a second, right? Skip was, was the one. third guard. Yo, bro. That was they don't one tell you about one stuff year. like this. I punched Mousy in his mouth in what the happened? Jersey tournament. I wish you would sit me for Steph's little brother. I ain't with that shit. Yo, you got to understand, this is the type of time I was on, bro. Yeah. Yo, look, I played with Fat Joe in the tournament in Jersey. We had an inside, an indoor game. I told you I'm talking spicy. I'm keeping shit 100. I love Mousy, <laughs> but I punched Mousy in his mouth. Why? I score once, the crowd go crazy. I score twice, the crowd go crazy. Kareem Reed tries to come down and scores the third time. Now, you play basketball. Y'all know basketball. Give it Yo, back. Reed, I got the crowd. Give it back. Why, why would you take the third one? If, 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 if they showing that they can't stop me, why would Reed take the third one? But this is what I dealt with at a young age. Reed takes the third one. The crowd goes super crazy. M- Mousy take me out right behind that because now he sees that Reed – is getting ready to get rocking and can get the crowd. That's his man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, bro, I, I punched Mousy in his mouth. Wow. Respectfully. Fat Joe is mad. They all upset. Yo, these facts, nigga, I don't make shit up. They mad. And I don't, I don't mean to say this as if, like, I'm trying to make fun of it. Why? You got to understand, I was taught, shout out, and I love Cam for this, nigga, my family. He always told me stand for something before for anything. You don't never let nobody take nothing from you. What you earn and what you put in, you don't never let no one take from you. No matter how people judge you, you make sure that you stand firm in what you do. So even if we move forward to today, I'm a utility aide. I work for Mount Sinai. I got a career. 
thank you, God. All I'm saying to you is, if I'm going to be a utility aid just as a ball player, I'm going to be the best fucking utility aid. No one could be a better one than me. I don't give a fuck who worked here for 13 years, 15. Wherever I go, I'm going to be the best whatever it is that I do. That's always been my mind frame. Mm. So sometimes in life, you got to understand when you got that mind frame, people are not going to like you. People are not going to want to help you. People are not going to want to be there for you. Why? And y'all hope you understand in life, and I'm quite sure you see this, because of what you're doing. Yeah. A lot of kings can't hang with kings, B. I Let hope me... you understand this is why I got the shirt on. Niggas ain't got no other choice but to respectfully respect me. Facts. Because I talk greedy. Let me, let, me, let me ask you this, though. All right, so look, right? Like, all through, I, I, I heard a comment that you made. Um, it was a while back, maybe a couple years back, right? You said you said something along the lines of, yo, I don't have a lot of friends nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Because when it was go time and we was in the jungle, I was New York to take their head off. It was, it was kill or be killed. And and I had to I had to snatch they 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 head off their neck. You know what I'm saying? Rather than It was either no you or no me. Right. You gotta so, understand that that's the era that I grew up in. I they they were either gonna know you got, like I said, I graduated from Bronx Regional High School, bro. I went to yeah. graphic arts. I went to prep school. I didn't have the conventional route that Kenny Sat had, Kevin Bell had. I didn't have Andre Barrett. I didn't have that route. Omar Cook. These were right, guys right, in my right. era that was, that was doing what they doing, and they ranked around the country. I'm going right. to always salute them. Why? Talik Brown. That's what I saw. Majestic Map. That's what I saw. Those were the names. Yeah. That's who they were talking about. Yeah. So, what, yeah, what you do you think? To... I'm gonna take. You think I'm gonna take it easy when I got a chance to show the world or people that even though they know who they are and they respect them, Adrian is not gonna show if if he has the opportunity in the best tournament. I give a fuck who it was. You're not gonna take that away from me. That was my whole point. Rucker was my. And I didn't realize it, but now that I got the footage, that was my NBA. It, it ain't nothing you could do about your history. But right. that was my NBA. That was my moment of when all the rappers, all the NBA players, all the people that had status, whatever you want to call it, in the world, without social media, bro, right. they were talked about. They were looked at. If you did your... If you did your thing or you held your own against them, bro, or you were, that's what people can't take away from me. I don't talk shit about me being nice or killing them or having good games against them. Yo, bro, I, I was a winner. And you got to understand the people that I was always surrounded around. When I played for Tony Rose, I had Charles Jones, right. leader of the NCAA in scoring. I had Lamont Jones, overseas killer, grown man, understands the game. I had a Lenny Cook, a number one player in high school in the country. I still was that nigga. I had Kareem <laughs> Reed. I had Steph Marbury. I had Reggie Freeman. I had Ray for Austin. I had Katino Mobley. I had Sean Marion. I had Zach Randolph. I had Al Harrington. I had Ron Artex. Steph Mark. I could keep going. Yeah. I'm still that nigga. You can't take that away from me. Why? I got footage. I stood for something. <laughs> the people that I grew up with, they always told me, stand for something. They going to know them. But in the long run, you could never let them forget about you. If I ain't do what I did, I'd be forgotten, bro. I'm legendary because Yo. I ain't let the world just <laughs> know them. You feel me? Yeah, you know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of your lyrics that, um, that, that Lux had did for you for your intro. You know what I'm saying? If we can't, we, if we, if we turn the corner and we ask about you and we don't hear nothing, like, yo, it's just saying it. You know what I'm saying? Let me ask you a question. You do podcasts. How many people ask you why can they be on your podcast? Be honest. And what I'm trying to say to you, you is, I'm just basing off of what you just said, bro. Yeah. I know a lot of ball players, But if, if I, I can't find out nothing block, about you, if I can't go around the block and the people talking about you, we all got a story. You you feel who you are. You did what you needed to do. I'm not knocking that. But what I'm saying to you is, if the people 
you, that that's the thing. That's why New York has been watered down and look, yo, dog. We got a overhype. We got a we got a thing where people put. How do you say, like, instant validation on these guys? Yeah. yeah. Yo, bro. I know y'all into basketball, but I don't know a kid to go and watch. I know who y'all hype. I know who y'all talk about and who y'all want to speak on because they from New York. Mm. But you ain't going to make me feel like I could go around the block and people talk. You got to understand I came from that era. You can't do that to me. I don't care if y'all niggas is showing me who y'all feel is nice right now. If I can't go in Harlem where I'm still at, if I can't walk in New York and I hear people, yo, yo, you heard about that kid from the West Side? Yo, bro, I ain't have social media, but yeah. you heard about butter. <laughs> you heard about, oh, I'm just saying, don't do that that's to me. Fact, I don't fact. hear that in New York. Don't do that to me, man. And and that's the problem. Yo, it, yo, hey, from from a from a peer. I'm your age. I'm your age group, right? We we. Are, I'm forty. You you thirty nine, right? Mm -hmm. Now, from a from a, I played ball. I went to prep school, all that too, as well, right? But mm -hmm. from a from a, a spectator aspect, I was thrilled. I was, and, and I'm, and this is respect here. You know what I'm saying? This is dead respect, cause I, you know, when sitting, and I told Skip the same thing. When I when I when you sitting as a spectator and you hear the announcer say. Ali Mo is in the building. A Barter is in Facts. the building. They can't, you know, you know. That, that excitement that, you, that as a spectator that, that I got from 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 hearing that, that that commentator say A Butter was in the building was undeniable, bro. And and I, you know what I'm saying? That's keeping it, that's keeping it a buck. You know what I'm if saying? If I can like, keep it a buck with you, imagine what that made me feel like, bro. Like, think about it. How did that make you feel? Like, from when I look at what they say about when a Chris Webber walks in the building or Amari Stoudemire, you see how they give them a different type of love, right? You right. get what I'm saying? You see how the crowd recognizes that. You know, do you know what it like was for my friends that knew that people waited online for two, three hours, but they could come straight in with me? It wasn't like. I was a person of status. Like I said, I didn't go to Catholic school. I didn't go, I didn't have that all American status. Yo, you don't get what I'm trying to say that to me, what that felt like in Harlem where I'm from, to watch someone used to call me the sellout to now, mm. yo bro, I could walk from 139th street and by the time I get to 155th and 8th, I got 15 people with me. I'm a dolo nigga, you know me? People see me mm. all the time. I really don't walk around with a crowd of people. Right, I'm not right. on that type of time. I'm a solo nigga. But when I do when I do get to where I'm going, because of how the community responds to me and the people know me and the love that I show, by the time I get to 55th, I got 20 people with me. Right. You got to understand that that's the impact that I'm trying to tell you what I know that I grew up with. No disrespect to Mace Cam, none of them, man. I don't want to just be known in my community, bro. I want to you. You don't like, like we don't, we don't, we don't understand that. Like, yo, hey, real quick, my my foot for cutting you off, but this joint about to cut off. We got, yeah. like, we got like forty minutes. I'm gonna come right back though. You know what I'm saying? So, you know we're something, gonna, yo. I'm come. here for you, bro. I already told you. It, this is all right. things who. This all for you, bro. Yo, I love your platform. Salute. Yo, same here, bro. We coming right back, man. More, Let's more. Let's do it. I'm here. Man. Coming right back with more A-Butter, y'all. Back. All right.